Hey guys, and welcome to Calligraphy Quill. Uh, before I continue in the video, um, remember to subscribe after you're done watching. Um, so today I'm gonna talk to you about the six nibs that every calligraphy beginner must have in their toolkit. Um, now here's the thing, I say must have, but you don't have to invest in them when you're just starting out. Um, and I'm gonna talk about some of the nibs that are just perfect for you if you're an absolute beginner, but it's always great to experiment with a few different tools so you know what works best for you and also so that you know what's out there in the market for you to try out. Um, the other thing is that these nibs are not necessarily for professional use only. Uh, professional calligraphers do use these, some of these, but they're not an absolute must for just professionals or the nibs that we're gonna talk about today are not just for beginners. That said, if you're in this for the long run, if calligraphy is your thing, um, I think it would be great for you to invest in these six nibs. So um, without further ado, let's head right into our video for today. All right guys, so these are the six nibs that we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Um, the first nib that I'm gonna share with you is the Nico G. Um, the Nico G is a fantastic nib for beginners. Um, and the reason for this is that it is a medium flex nib. So which means that um, for the same amount of pressure, um, you don't get a very wide downstroke. Um, so that means that only you just have to press lightly for the tines of the nib to open up. Um, when you're just starting to learn calligraphy, adjusting the pressure can be difficult, which is why it is best to start with the Nico G. Um, the other thing is that this is a very sturdy and durable nib. Um, so you're not likely to break it anytime soon as you're figuring out the amount of pressure you should be putting on the paper as you scribe. Um, the other best things about it is that the Nico G produces really fine hairlines. Um, I use it for my Spencerian work. Um, and if you're familiar with the Spencerian script, you probably know that the Nico G um, that the Spencerian script does not have a lot of shade. It only has shade in a few places. So which is great for um, me because, hey, I love Spencerian and I don't want to put shade on every letter. The other great thing is that because it has a relatively large um, ink reservoir compared to say the Browse EF66, you don't have to redip your, uh, your nib in ink as often as you would with say the smaller nibs. Um, so yeah, all in all, a great nib. And now I'm gonna show you a short clip where I'll be using the Nico G to scribe. All right, so our next nib that we're gonna talk about is the Zebra G. Um, so essentially, um, whenever you see a G written on a nib, uh, it means that, basically it means that it's not super flexible. It's a medium flex nib. Um, I tend to use the Zebra G a lot for my pointed pen um, calligraphy workshops. Um, it's very similar to the Nico G. The main difference is that it's slightly, uh, it has slightly different curvature than the Nico G. Um, they're, they're not super identical. So as you can see, the, their curvature is slightly different. Um, that said, all of these six nibs, in fact, 
they can fit your standard straight pen holder with a universal nib insert, which is fantastic, you know, because that means that you don't have to buy separate pen holders, separate straight pen holders for each of these nibs. Now, remember, this only applies to those pen holders that have a universal, um, let me grab a pen for you, universal nib insert, which is this silvery part in here. Um, they won't work with the ones that are plastic, like the Speedball straight pen holder, but all of these nibs will easily fit into pen holders that have this insert. Um, so with that, let's move on to our next nib, which is the 101. But before I do, here's another short clip of me using the Zebra G for scribing. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the Hunt Imperial 101. So um, this nib is slightly more flexible than your Nico or your Zebra Gs, uh, which means that for the same amount of pressure, the, the Hunt 101 opens up way more than the Nico or the Zebra G. So I'm just gonna give you a quick demo of that. So that's your Nico and then that is your Hunt Imperial 101. Um, this is a very versatile nib. Um, I, I mean, you can use it for almost all kind of scripts. I mean, I've seen calligraphers use it for copper plate, use it for Spencerian, and even for modern calligraphy. The other great thing is that um, you can use it to make larger X heights, uh, which is essentially the height of the lowercase u. Um, so, which is perfect, you know, if you're working on a commission, for instance, a quote or a poem. Um, and that said, you don't have to use this only for commissions. You can use the 101 for both practice as well as commission work. So, super versatile nib um, and an absolute delight to use. <laughs> All right, so moving on, we're almost halfway there. We're actually halfway there. Uh, the next nib that we have is the Hunt 22 EF. EF stands for extra fine. Uh, this is a smaller nib uh, compared to your Nico G and Zebra Gs. Um, and again, it's pretty flexible. It just look how wide the tines open up. Um, the other great thing is that, again, you can use it for much larger X heights as compared to these two. Um, and then I tend to use the Hunt 22 for shaded scripts like copper plate, for instance, because for the same amount of pressure, I don't have to press as hard to get that nice juicy downstroke. Um, the only thing to keep in mind with the Hunt 22 is that it tends to catch on fibers, paper fibers pretty easily, similar to the Nico G. So you probably want to keep, um, the Hunt 22 limited to smoother papers like uh, laser jet, for instance, or any any smooth paper that you that you have lying around. Um, but I would not recommend it for handmade papers because it's going to be catching on the paper fibers pretty rapidly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next up is this monster of a nib. It's the Hunt Globe 513EF. Now this gigantic nib um, is one of the least flexible out of these three, which means that you won't get, I mean, it's just look, there's barely any, um, you know, the, the tines barely open up. So which means that this nib is best for monoline scripts. So for instance, if you're doing, um, if you're practicing business writing, this would be great because in business writing, you don't need your, you don't need um, a lot of shades. The other great thing, obviously, as you can tell, is that because of how huge this, uh, this nib is, um, it has a pretty large ink reservoir. So which means you don't have to dip your nib in ink as frequently as you would the smaller ones like the Hunt 22, for instance. Um, the other great thing, you can use it for both smooth and rough papers. That's coming from experience, guys. Um, I, I've tried it on both kind of papers and it's been exceptionally, um, it, it's behaved exceptionally well. So that is your Hunt 513. <laughs> Moving on to the last nib of the day, the blue pumpkin. Uh, the blue pumpkin or the bra steno is easily identifiable by its beautiful blue, navy blue color, um, as well as its distinct shape. I mean, just look how gorgeous that is, right? Uh, the best thing about this nib is that because the tip isn't super pointy, as compared to let's say the Nico G. I'm gonna see if this thing focuses. All right, almost there. So you can see the Nico G is much pointier than the blue pumpkin. Uh, so because of this small characteristic, this nib, the brass um, steno is perfect for using on handmade paper because it won't catch the fibers um, of your paper as you write. Um, and again, because of its large <laughs> reservoir here, um, you don't have to dip your nib in ink as often. Um, and this is, like I said, it's it's not super flexible. It's rather low flex, which makes it great for modern calligraphy, as well as if you're an absolute beginner, this would be a great nib to use. So fairly easily identifiable, um, especially when you compare it with these two um, and a pleasure to use. So these were our six nibs that I feel are an absolute essential um, to have in your calligraphy toolkit. Um, again, like I said, there's a lot of nibs and other tools in the market for you to experiment. Um, and it's always great to try new things so that you know what works best for you. Um, the other thing like I was mentioning during the video is that not every nib or not every other tool, ink for instance, or paper um, works in the same combination like every time. Um, you're gonna use different nibs for different purposes. Um, always keep that in mind. Now with that said, uh, please don't forget to like and share our video and I would love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel because you know that your support means the world to me. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. So until next time and I will see you soon.